I'm Julian Darley, I'm president of Post Carbon Institute. What should Michigan do to prepare for peak oil? Michigan should do, at the highest level of, of abstract thinking, the same thing as everyone else should do um, at every level, and that is relocalize. And that will mean uh, examining the um, daily needs, what are your daily needs, some of which are the same amongst all human beings and some of which have differences depending on climate and culture, and figure out what is vital to your existence, both the individual and at the institutional and the business and economic and cultural levels. Um, understand those things as quickly as possible and decide which of those things you really can't do without if things got difficult and, and start thinking about shortening supply chains. All supply chains should be shortened if possible. Some supply chains it's much more important to shorten quickly than others. If you decide for instance that mangoes are vital to your daily existence and you live in Michigan, you've got a couple of choices. Either you will have to make sure you've got a good supply of them from where they come from, Africa or other hot parts of the world, or invest in some expensive greenhouses. My guess is in the case of mangoes, you're probably not going to go the greenhouse route. But in some cases, you might want to go the greenhouse route if only you could heat it sensibly and without using vast amounts of fossil fuel and all those kinds of problems. And that's the, the example I give around mangoes, you can substitute anything you like. Do we consider it to be vital to our uh, uh, existence, both as individuals and at the larger level, um, state, industry, uh, economics and so forth? If you do, then think very carefully about how you're going to get it as we uh, enter into a more profound decline of energy than I think we've seen possibly ever in our history, certainly than anything we've seen recently. And um, our mantra at Post Carbon Institute is a reduced consumption produce locally. It's almost truism to say that if you can reduce consumption enough to match what you can produce locally of whatever it is, be it wheat, mangoes, corn, heat, electricity, then that's sustainable, um, all things being equal. So that is really the deep task. How can, how can uh, demand be matched to supply, understanding that that supply somehow or other has to become sustainable fairly soon um, and that sustainable has a much more deep meaning than we're used to thinking it as, be it the greenwash version or, or a deeper green version if you like. The only true sustainability is managing on sunlight, current sunlight not the ancestral sunlight that's embodied in fossil fuels. Now, there, there's a lot of sunlight that hits the earth every day. It's true. Uh, Michigan gets some, um, perhaps not as much as California, where I now live, um, more than in British Columbia, where I used to live, I would imagine. Um, but the point is, although it is quite a lot, it's dispersed, it's not easy to capture, and it's absolutely vital that we leave nature a rather better portion of sunlight, of water, of land, of good land, of fertile, productive land than we've been wont to do lately. Uh, otherwise we're also going to, we are adding to our problems by causing ecosystem c collapse uh, right, left and centre. Um, so there's a, there's a suite of things that happens to every animal that manages to get its hands on a large amount of abundant, nearly free energy, available energy goes into population bloom, and uh, if we do things right, we will manage to control uh, our demands, which I'm afraid will mean controlling our human numbers, and there are nice ways of doing it, and not so nice ways of doing it. Um, will we do that, or will we let nature take its course, um, which is the usual population bloom, and I'm afraid, bust strategy. And the bust strategy is one that I profoundly would like humanity to avoid.